out here in San Francisco in the Bay Area at the third annual Social Capital Markets Convening and Conference, also known as SOCAP 11. And uh, this interview is a special one because I'm sitting here with Penelope Douglas, who is the senior executive and president of the board for SOCAP, as well as Hub Soma, and formerly was the co founder and CEO of Pacific Venture. Right. Pacific Community Ventures. Pacific Community it. Ventures, <laughs> yeah. that's right. Uh, well, Penelope, um, first, I just want to say that what you've done with SOCAP is pretty unbelievable. Thank you. You know, I mean, where you started three years ago and where it's gone today has been leaps and bounds in terms of the attendance, the conversations, the growth of the market. Uh, and what I'm most curious about, of course, is where do you think this is going next? Where's it all going? <laughs> gaze into the crystal ball. Where is yeah. this going? Well, you know, I can't answer that question simply. I think we're going to, we're probably going to talk about that quite a bit, uh, both ourselves, but every one of us who's here, you know, over the next uh, year as we get ready for the next SOCAP. Um, but what I think is really happening now is that the conversation is starting to get to the difficult part. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah. it's the part that nobody really wants to talk about, but that is essential for really turning this from a movement into um, the most important part of our capital for a sustainable society. Mm -hmm. And I think those painful conversations are around power. Mm -hmm. um, how do we get power and powerful voices into the hands of those who aren't the money hands yeah. so that the conversation starts to really change? Mm -hmm. That's one place where I think I see the market going. Um, I think the other thing that I see is that there's a genuine desire for more collaboration um, we're seeing more incentive, more motivation, whether it's from corporations, uh, the government, um, individuals, to really try to figure out how to collaborate. The uh, painful part of that part of the conversation is that collaboration, as you know and as I know, is a lot harder than it, uh, than it looks, really than it good. sounds. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's fun, but it's tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Room. yeah absolutely. So, so those pain points where it's starting to get more difficult, is that because it's getting more disciplined, because more people are watching what's happening here, or where, where is that Why pressure is that coming from? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think part of the pain comes from the fact that we've got to recognize that we have a lot more capacity building to do. Um, the other part of it is that um, there is a power problem, um, and there's a struggle to both invite into the room those who should be part of that conversation about power when it comes to social capital markets. Mm -hmm. But there's also a kind of avoidance of having those people in the room. Um, and so that's the other place where I think the pain comes from. Where, where do you see in terms of the, the capacity side yeah. to start there? Where, where, are the, where are the biggest gaps right yeah. now in your mind? One of the big gaps is in the capacity of social entrepreneurs. Um, I think it's very hard for young or any social entrepreneur today to, to really know how to build a long-lasting, sustainable company. But I think technology as a means of accessibility and scale is where we're going to see a lot of great business models for social enterprise. And the other place where I think we're going to see a lot is in uh, sort of uh, supply chains, you know, where we can sort of see great solutions to supply chains. Um, those aren't necessarily going to be um, huge revenue, huge profit producing companies, but they're going to be really important infrastructure companies in the social capital movement and the social capital arena, and I think that they will be sustainable. So the final question is, what is it that you're working on or talking about now where people think you're crazy, think you're naive? Yeah. Well, one of, it, one of, the, one of the conversations that I'm having now more and more, which I don't know if people think I'm crazy, yeah. but they definitely think that I'm, <laughs> once again, you know, taking on you know, the toughest job is, is, is how we started this conversation. It's, it's how you bring that painful question into the room mm -hmm. about um, shifting the power base or balancing the power base so that we, we find that the powerful voices in the room aren't exclusively those with the money. Mm -hmm. I really feel so strongly about that as a key to unlocking the scaling potential of sustainable capital for a sustainable planet mm -hmm. that I'm really trying to figure out how to take that on. That's probably what I'm thinking about and talking about right now that's causing <laughs> some of my closest friends to kind of shake their heads and say, oh God, here goes Penelope again. <laughs> Yeah, taking on something tough. It's almost, you know, you're going from global movement to, yeah. it sounds like that's pretty localized, a lot of that. Well, it's, it's not so much, I think it's actually a global question. It's, it's, it happens to be a serious problem in the U.S. I think it's incumbent on us here domestically 
to lead some of the solutions to at least having those conversations. Well, Penelope, I wish we could have yeah, this conversation for so much longer. Thanks so much thank for you. Uh, spending time with me.